Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thanks for joining me I'm Katie and today we're having a bit of an experimental one first of all before we get into things if you are new here why not hit that subscribe button because I do a whole bunch of other things on here and make sure you check out the other videos right let's get cracking shall we so yes, I mentioned it was an experimental video, for better words, and one or two of my subs have mentioned trying some of the products from The Works. Now The Works is a UK based company and they sell a lot of books, they sell budget giftware, knickknacks craft materials and they also have their own art materials as well and they go under two names there is Crawford and Black and the other brand is Boldmere and for a little bonus as well I have added a another budget shop brand in which is B&M the paints I'm using also fall under the Crawford and Black label and I thought let's give it a try. Now before I get too far into this, this isn't to whinge about these materials or set out to say bad things about them because I've been really broke before and I've had to buy the best I could afford and now I've not used these paints before but I have used paper and I have used other items from the works. This is perhaps to show you more what you can do with it and rather than what you can't and finding the best uses for these things and I'm going to be as fair as possible with it and I'm also going to revisit the watercolour paper in a future video and do a little bit more of a comparison but that is for another day. So let's talk about the first impressions of the paint. They were £2 in the UK and I, I, I'm sure again there are equivalents around the world they probably just picked up a nameless brand and put their own stamp on it like a lot of companies do so I'm sure you'll probably be able to get these all over the world just under a different name so adding the water to the little cakes in this set and I noticed they were hydrophobic. Even as we're getting to the last colours that I'm mixing in with the brush, that, that water is not absorbed in. That was very weird. Whether it was a final coating because these are brand new and when they'd got pressed in the machine, it just created a hydrophobic surface there or it's the paint themselves. I don't know, but yeah i think if you're gonna get these you're gonna just have to mash the brush in there giving them a nice dainty spritz will not work the color names next to the pigments don't massively match up either and oh no I, i'm not sure how i feel about that it's a two pound set of watercolors so I, i'm not expecting it to be exact but it, it's just a bit it's a bit odd now the paper I'm swatching this here is the Crawford and Black watercolour pad. In this pad you get 16 sheets and it's 230 GSM acid free micro perforation for easy removal and it's an A4 size for argument's sake. The paper itself has got a bit of a texture and it's heavily bleached so you have quite an unnatural white colour to it rather than your slightly off white of a regular watercolour. There is a bit of texture there, however the paper is very absorbent I thought and it didn't massively encourage the watercolours to flow. Now whether that's the case with professional watercolours I don't know but that was my first impression. The second watercolour pad is the other works brand known as Boldmere and that is 12 sheets, 300 GSM and again that is an A4 size. It goes into a little bit more detail saying it's acid free and cold press and compared to the Crawford and Black it has that a little bit more of a watercolour paper feel to it. 
it's not bad for the swatching on, it didn't curl up much and the paint did stay a little bit wetter for longer. Now for the bonus round. Again, here in the UK, we have a bargain shop called B&M and I have dabbled in their art materials before and I was actually looking for some watercolours, but unfortunately I couldn't find any at present. Anyway, this is labelled as artist watercolour paper, 16 sheets and that's it. N no other details, nothing about how thick the paper is, what kind of finish the paper is or anything. But again, for £2 can't expect too much. So as a round up, the Brunel and Franklin from B&M was okay, it seemed a bit more like cardstock. The Crawford and Black was just too absorbent and I, I wasn't a fan of it, if I be honest, and that unnatural colour white underneath didn't do it for me either. So for my painting, I went with the Bold Mirror. So the purpose of this video, it's it's not to set this up to fail, it's it's not to say cheap materials are rubbish, I've tried to be as fair as possible with this and I always think, especially if you're a beginner as well, personally buy the best you can afford because you'll get better results with certain things. For me the paper I'm using, the Bold Mirror, it's okay. It's it's not bad to practice on. I wouldn't use it for a commission, for example, but perhaps if I just wanted to have a tinker about, just paint something for the sheer fun of it, or perhaps if I was travelling and I wasn't too precious about the paper I was taking, I'd probably take that. It'd be great for doodling in and it could probably take a good wash of colour and I'd recommend it for that. The Crawford and Black I personally would not use for watercolours at all. For an extra pound I'd go with the Bold Mirror if you're going to do that. But the Crawford and Black, you'd probably be best off just doodling in it with dry medium. But it's the colour of the paper, it, it's it's just not great. It just reminds me of children's, children's drawing pads I suppose. Just a a wee bit thicker but not much better. The Brunel Franklin by B&M, again I wouldn't say it was really a watercolour paper, to me it seemed more like a thick cartridge paper. Again for £2 it, it's okay for doodling or if you've got thumbnails and you don't want to just use scrap paper or you just want to take it to a better level before you use better paper but again though if it's all you can afford it's not terrible to work with. I think the Franklin Brunel is a great cartridge pad alternative rather than an artist watercolour one and the Bold Mirror is not a bad watercolour pad. Am I making sense? Right let's talk about the paint. So yes the paints let's get on to them. Ah uh, they, they were chalky they, they weren't great. Um, I think for a few pounds more you could probably buy better quality if you could get your hand on some Reeves or some Daler. You might not have as many colours but you could mix them together better. These were really hard to work with and that's the thing I think with really cheap watercolours is yeah you can do so much but then you have to work about a million times harder and you're still not going to get them results. So would I recommend the paints? Absolutely not, no. You're not going to get a feel for how watercolours work with these. They just feel like children's paints and they behave like children's paints. If you wanted to have an affordable option, you could go on eBay and possibly pick up a Cotman set or an Aquarelle set by De La Roney or Windsor & Newton for a little bit more but not much more and you'd have a much better learning experience and painting experience. As for the paper, if you've got to get them, the Bold Mirror one was okay but Cotman paper isn't much more than that. The Crawford and Black one, not great for watercolour and the Brunel Franklin, not great either but you could use them for sketch pads if you had to. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I do hope you've found it useful as well, whether you're pursuing watercolour yourself or just out of curiosity like me. 
If you have enjoyed this video though, don't forget to hit that like button as well as subscribe and I will see you lovely lot on the next video. Bye!